Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to My Chamber TV. The Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce has done it again. They have got us outstanding guests. We are at Aston Gardens. That's where we're shooting from today. And my first guest, Miss Kathleen Slavin, right? And you are an artist extraordinaire. Oh, thank you. Um, I love it. Uh, I like, this is my kind of art. art. Ah, Absolutely. Nice so, yes. And, and I know you've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what made you get into the art world. Well, inspired by my Aunt Joanna. And if okay. you look her up, Joanna Paleman, hard to spell, but uh, from Wisconsin, she's 88 and still drawing strong. Wow. So my childhood, I grew up with my aunt, you know, she's got photos. I mean, I mean, not photos, pardon me, drawings and little tiny um, frames all over her apartment. It's oh, just wow. amazing. So with that, um, didn't really do much with my art doodle when I was a kid in high school. I actually, if you don't mind sh me showing, no, we'll in high school, right um, I won't say what year. <laughs> 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 anyway, we got an A plus on my first graphite. Um, you know, it, and I have to tell you, my mom still regrets to this day. I was in high school in Virginia, that she didn't push me to art school. Oh wow! And that's okay. Well, it looks like you've done really well. well I mean, it's a, it's a I, history so how this, I got here. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm a color guy, yeah. right? And yeah. that to me is absolutely. Go to my camera there, Rob. Um, that is gorgeous. That, Absolutely that's gorgeous. That's my little idea. I thought, well, I'm going to put a bird in its own feather. Right? So it's a series of birds in its feather. Bird in its feather. So let's talk about the history of how, okay. how you got here. So history happens that, uh, you know, moved all over the United States, our family did. And um, I, and I think it was yeah, 1986, I became an entrepreneur when that wasn't a real popular thing to do. That was unheard of. You know, I, I worked out of my house. In a nutshell, um, I became, this is how I used my art, I became an image consultant. So head to toe, mm -hmm. makeup, that whole nine yards. The funny thing about that is um, <laughs> I went to a place called Kim Ju Studios and kind of BSed my way in mm -hmm. and said I was, a, I was a certified image consultant but not a makeup artist. Right. So I worked there doing makeup and hair, didn't do hair. But I did it for a couple of years. Right. So that is how I utilized my art. John, if you will, it was about eyes. Eyes were my specialty, and I okay. just love doing eye makeup. Anyway, so fast forward, um, I did that for a while, did the makeup for many, many years, moved all over the United States, as I said, and I came here in um, 2000. Okay. I actually was on staff with the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. Ah. I was in the early, and I lived at Twin Branch Acres. I had two, oh, okay. two horses. So anyway, Jumpstart that then, um, my horse passed away at 30 years old, bringing me to Clearwater Beach. I moved, right. okay, sold the place. And um, in 2017, something not very fun happened. I had a pretty bad concussion. Oh my. Yeah, but silver linings come from not so great things. That's correct. That's the beautiful thing and weird about life. So when I couldn't be on my computer-based businesses, I had two of them, mm -hmm. multiple streams of income has mm -hmm. always been my thing. Guess what? My brother in uh, LA says, pick up your pencils. So I started drawing graphite. Right. Then I took a couple classes at Dunedin Fine Arts Center. Oh, I love Dunedin. Isn't That's it great? a great place. So my first time out, I with an Osprey, funny picture, it was big eyed something, it was themed big eyes. That's mom and I celebrating with our big sunglasses. That's but awesome. I got an award. And I also, uh, I'm a photographer, I draw from my photography. Golly, I got into um, Tampa Bay Magazine with an Osprey. Wow. Yeah. So, published photographer. So, anyway, that's kind of how it all has come about. Silver Lining, that was 2017, and I've, I haven't stopped since. I and love and my so, you're, you're into the animal, birds. Yes, yeah. I'm a realist. I see a lot of birds. I, I know. I, I love, but it's I'm, great. I'm expanding, and you'll see what I'm well, working I mean, on look, now. But. You got one piece of artwork on, on a coaster. That's a squirrel. They're fun. Who doesn't love squirrels? Right? I know. That's a red squirrel, and that's endangered, which brings me to my mission. That is uh, to bring awareness to the endangered species of our Earth. It's, it's, okay. it's awful. You know, I get concerned about it, and especially to our youth. we got to think about the animals. Mm -hmm. So I'll just jump to this one. Here's right. One this, in, this one's beautiful. Well, these are both Floridian you know, endangered species. This one's in progress, and that is the red wolf. 
Okay, that is a very endangered species on our planet. So much to do on that little guy yet. But um, again, that's, that's part of my mission is to bring awareness. Now you work with all mediums, it looks like to me. Well, I, I mean, in the, in the, in the, 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 the colors I'm seeing here, the graphs. Yep, I, I do calligraphy bes besides um, graphite mm -hmm. pencils, colored pencils, which I didn't even think about until I went to Dunedin Fine Art and took a couple of sessions. Color, you're like, this good thing. It, well, and I love <laughs> colors, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that. It's all good. And there's one thing that uh, not many people know about. This is very hard to film. I yeah, know. so I'll, I'll you talk yeah. about it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it where people at home can kind of see, because they it's, turn it sideways, and there it is. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's called, it's a Lost Renaissance Art Silver Point. And my Aunt Joanna did guide me in this a little bit because you've got the touch. It is amazing. You have to ground a board, you know, it takes days. And then you have this silver tipped pen and you etch into it. You cannot make a mistake. You just, you can't. There's you no gotta way to be, it's got to be on. It's got to be it. So There's I no love touching it up later. Right, right. I love when people say, I just want to touch that feather. Well, it's when I first looked at it. I'm like, well, is that an actual feather? Because I mean, that's. I really, love that reaction. That really looks like a actual feather that's been fine, you know, and in, 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 in kind of shaved yeah. and put in place, and then maybe it just sat. Thank you. You know, so that is absolutely phenomenal. And now you said that the older it gets, it gets a little darker. The darker uh -huh. it will get. Uh -huh. So we'll. Because the silver kind of whatever you patinas. call that. Patinas. Thank right. you. Right. Yes. Yeah. That is absolutely. It's, it's very. And now, now. Takes a lot so of time. How did, who taught you that one? Well, nobody. <laughs> just I just, I read about it and I talked to my aunt about it and then I went up to uh, Wisconsin, I don't know what year it was, a couple years ago. And she just said, here's how you do the prep. And I had gotten the pen and she just watched me do it and she goes, you've got the touch. But That's that was amazing. because I watched her, Watch, you know, right. from afar too. But as a kid, but now yeah. something else that your artwork has made <laughs> on, and I know, I know, we're all not we're, we're sick of these. <laughs> but you know what? Look at that. It was that pretty is, amazing that all of a sudden my drawings were on masks. The it's eyes are cute. following me. <laughs> they are following me. I'm telling you right now, that is cool. So now my challenge is, I've got you know several of them. What do I do with it? Make art out of it? Okay. Well, you know, there's people <laughs> that. Before the, the before the COVID world, there were people that always wore masks anyway. It's, it's, you know what? In China, so, especially. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. the overseas. That's a big deal. I bet you ship a. There, <laughs> There's an like, idea. Oh, I'll buy them because I mean, um, we go to Comic Cons and the Oriental people, the Chinese, the the Japanese, yeah. they're all still wearing it. They wore them anyway. They did. So I thought it was because of pollution, but I think mm -mm. it was just because. No, they they're a, they're so a very people. health conscious. You you would think very yeah. health conscious. Yeah. Uh, um, a group of people. Now you got one more right here that we're going to show. It's this in the plastic. The, yeah, that'll take a second. But this is pretty neat because on my website, there's so many mediums that you can just order. It goes right to your door. This is on metal. Oh, now no it way. didn't. The coloring didn't turn out so great, but the the there details go, kind of fun. Maybe mm -hmm. get to me. There you go. That is cool. It's different. You can it's use it on all different, different things, all different sizes, and you could put. Magnet on the back and yep. right on the fridge yep. or right on the. That's absolutely. Now, is that an etch or is that? No, I did. That was just um, graphite pencil, same as, as that the little African. Huh? So I'm looking on your website. I love the birds. Thank you. And dragonflies. And dragonflies. Yep. There's the osprey. See the osprey over there is with the one I, the photography. I have that some photography, if not much. Put that where we not can much. actually see that. So now, where do people find you? Well, I live on Clearwater Beach. Oh, don't give me home address. I know, oh, but God. I'm not doing that. Stalkers. I'm not I'm doing that. You, it's not fun. <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's not fun. So, but, no, no, no. But um, if you go to my website, okay. uh, that is a new one this year. is Kathleen Slaven with an E N art dot com. Okay. And now they can fun. order all this. Absolutely. They can, they can call me. They can say, hey, do you take commissions? I say, yes. I don't draw humans. Uh -huh. um, a lot of times, could you draw me and my pet? No. Nope. No humans. But I can draw your pet. Yep. So happily. I, ha okay. So happily. so if I have a, an animal that has passed away and oh, I yeah. want to do a nice big memorialization for, yes. of the of him, you can handle that, that is kind the, of stuff. The, one of the main things I get are people. Okay, my dog's getting up there in age, or my kitty, and they're so happy they've done it. Or yeah. people do it for people that know. Yeah. That so, have done it. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a nice Everything, memoir. Everything's on your website. Yep. I love, see, we love that. It's clean. It's nice. a website. Easy. Right. No, so let me ask you this. I know we only got 39 seconds left. 
if I wanted to get something done, about how long does it take? And I know that's a very open-ended yeah. no, question. It's super. It's a great question. Thank okay. you. Each of these pieces does take a while. Yeah. I mean, the, there's an eagle on there that took me four months, but he was a big guy. Big guy. Okay. Um, I don't like deadlines. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I really don't. So I'm not giving you a definitive date. It's a, just it'll get done. A dear friend, Tracy Earhart, with the chamber, she made all these for me, but she has me commissioned, and she knows, Kathleen. No deadline. When it's done, so it's done. So I'm going to make this quick, but yeah, I, I like to give me at least a month. Okay. Seriously. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if you've got something you need done, this is the lady to call. She'll take care of animals only. No dudes, no girls, no humans. <laughs> just, just animals. Hey, go uh, refreshing your coffee, tea, or drink, whatever you got, and we'll be right back after these messages. back and guess what we've got the best realtor in the area right hi right we have Gwen <laughs> trujillo did i say it right trujillo trujillo yeah. got it. <laughs> you know i just i just wanted her to say it that's all um you the, you're a returning guest for us yes i am thank you so much for having me back oh any anytime <laughs> any anytime this this young lady right here is a hoot so but you're you are you are the realtor in this area aren't you I would like to think so, yes. Anytime someone thinks of real estate, I'm hoping they think of Quinn Trujillo. See, I always like to be the guy that when they go, uh, I, I, I need a realtor. Oh, I know the realtor. The realtor. Cute, the realtor. The realtor. <laughs> so what, now, what do you specialize in? My uh, specialization is in senior real estate. I help those that are transitioning that uh, from their home when it's no longer safe, or they just find a better socialization in a community. So I help them transition from their home to a community. Oh, okay. So if, I get it. Right, so if like not a place like this, not an Aston Gardens where we're actually shooting from today. It's actually like an Aston Gardens, really? absolutely. So if they're no longer wanting to live at home, they no longer want the maintenance, they want the socialization, or it's no longer safe, and they want to move into a long-term care community like okay. this, I show them the options on why they should live in some place like this and then sell their home, especially in a market like this. Now, do you sell the home? Like, okay, so say if I came to you and say, look, I'm, I'm going to move in over to Aston You're not Gardens. a senior. You're so young yet. But but they tell me 55 <laughs> and they have pretty nurses. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure how my wife's going to feel about that, but you know, it is. Um, so now do you sell the house and all the contents or you just sell the house and they've got to get rid of the contents? So I help coordinate for them. I'm a one-stop shop. Oh, okay. Now keep in mind, most of the equity is going to be in the home. Right. So the contents, they're not going to get very much, but I have resources in place, three different ones that they can call, find out where they get a comfort level from and move on with that. But I, I, portion that out okay so i because i actually have had talked to seniors that we sold our house and now we're now well, we have a storage unit what do we do really don't this? want it yeah and can't, you know so they just kind of start giving stuff away and there's a but there's a way there's a little bit of a money thing there they can make back to help absolutely return, defray right? the cost yeah i like to help them in all aspects of it so it's a holistic approach for me i help them find the attorney that they need for their wills probates get all of that power of attorney all of that stuff you in are place a one -stop shop. right and then they can move into some place like this depending on what their activities of daily living is depending on what their budget is all of those things will help them find a place. I've got placement companies that can do that. If they already have identified a community that they like, I help ease that transition. Okay. I let the admissions director know all the timeline so that they can have their side ready as well. So it's uh, just move into one, move out, move out That's of one, right. move into another. Yeah. Now, if she looks really familiar to you, and she should, because she is a superstar <laughs> that has been on HGTV, Several times, seven, eight, nine, seven times. No, it's counting though. I'm not counting. <laughs> Just seven. So what were you doing on HGTV? 
So for HGTV, I was on House Hunters. Okay. You might have seen that show yes. a couple of times. A couple a times. <laughs> a few. It's a favorite for a lot of people. The premise of the show is that the realtor shows the buyer three different homes. At the end of that time, they pick a home of their dreams. And you've been on there, what, seven times? Seven times, just around here in the Tampa Bay that area. It's amazing. It's fun. It's absolutely fun. You know how much fun we had right before this oh, show. I'm telling I mean, can you, you imagine a whole room? day of this? Oh man, I'd love to be your uh, your camera guy and your in your audio sound guy. guy? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that is the job. I'm just saying. John um, just wants to play with my hair. That's, that's what it. It is. Look at that hair; it's so much gorgeous. So, um, are you finding that your houses are going really quick right now? Hmm. That is the hot topic right now. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a seller's market. So I never want to tell my clients, do it now, do it now. But right. right now, if they're kind of teetering on that, I would say, you know, within the next year or so, they might want to kind of get all their ducks in a row. It's a process. They can't right. just put their home on the market. No, right. It's a little bit of a process. Yes. You got to figure out where you're going. If they are definitely moving into a community, a lot of the communities right now, they have so many good incentives for you to move in. And when the market is so hot, I would say take advantage of it now rather than later. Because now not only are you getting the highest price point for your house, but the terms and conditions are by far the best I've ever seen. People are waiving inspections. They are waiving their appraisal contingencies. So you pretty much have a clear shot that you're going to sell your home in the time frame that you want to sell your home. Now, are you also, so if I came to you and said, I do want to move, but I don't really, I don't know where I want to move to. I don't know if I want to go to an Aston Gardens or a Brooks or whatever. You know those facilities. Yeah, I have probably stepped foot in almost every single facility here in Pinellas, Hillsborough County. Um, but I that is not my expertise. No, my no, expertise is that, real yeah. estate, but I'm familiar with almost every single one of them. If we're going to drill down into what their activities of daily living are and what their budgets are, I've, I pair up with several different placement companies, okay. and that is their job to find out. It's like a buyer agent for the senior yes yeah that's Ve what i was thinking right? very much like that yes okay that's that's a, and then you know the attorneys you just kind of right i stay in my lane right. i just stay in real estate but i know enough to ask the questions for the client so that it's a seamless process for them that's a big deal yeah super big deal. right because real estate is so stressful and they know that this is probably going to be one of the last moves and they want to make it as um pleasant as possible they want it to be the move the move yeah and i mean this With place is Q gorgeous with Q the Realtor. <laughs> See? It's going to be fun and seamless. There. there you go. Now, what, what, what part of the um, uh, Florida do you work with? You work, can you work all over Florida or are you just mainly are in the Tampa Bay proper? So we are li I'm licensed to work anywhere in the state of Florida. But as far as where my preference is, I would love to stay just in Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsboro, just okay. in this little, little radius. Little county mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That, that is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so what, tell me something about you that no one knows. Oh my gosh, all my skeletons on this show. Yep, that's it, because you're the most fun kind of person. I, you're, there's something in here, people can go, what? <laughs> I can't tell you, this is such a tough and competitive business, and I think a lot of people think we are all cutthroat. We really do like to work with each other or with right. other realtors, so I really collaborate as much as I can with other real estate agents because we can't do it by ourselves, for and sure. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for a mere nine years, so a I, mere um, nine yeah, kind of. I kind of know what I'm doing now. I think I got the groove going. Got, I, I, I <laughs> got kinda, it. So, so what do you see? I mean, I know this is. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what do you see coming down the path for the? housing market you know that is that has definitely been the hot topic the debate that's been going on is there going to be a bust in the economy right. or is it going to skyrocket so yeah. what i'm seeing is i'm looking at data trends and i'm seeing that way back when you know a lot of people are like there's going to be a foreclosure coming up i don't see that this time around we're seeing a lot more cash in the market mm -hmm. um, people are bringing more cash to the table or buying it straight out i think the last projection i saw was 44 percent of our sales were cash wow Right. So before it was just the market was um, it was fraught with a lot of fraud. Yes. No, we're not seeing that now. No. So there's not going to be a lot of foreclosures. Would there be a slight correction, maybe a stagnation in the market? Absolutely. But I don't see it plummeting like it did no. back in 2008. I, 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 what, I mean, what about you? I don't know you, but I have my wife is in this world, too. She's on the financing side of it. And, she, and, they, and they're going. She's doing really well this year, then, she huh? She is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't ever see her. It's always, I mean, all the way until midnight, she's doing, she's doing uh, 
um, yeah, she's doing work. But, <laughs> it, um, but it, she's all, all of a sudden people are going, okay, it's getting ready to plateau and just gonna it's going to correct for just a little bit. So houses won't go in two days right. or a day. Literally, she had a client put in a day. It's mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. So is that you think that's kind of coming around the bend? I think we're going to see more of like what we have been seeing in the past two weeks, three weeks, even a month. I mean, that's more of a normal market. Right, exactly. right now, it's just... Um, Wildly chaotic is how I describe it. <laughs> so do you ever get to sleep? What's that? Yeah, exactly. Sleep, right. I know. It's like... Uh, I'll sleep next year. It's fine. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. If it slows down, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, if it slows down. So where can people find you? So um, on my website has all my contact information, cuetherealtor.com. You can call me at 813-409-7446 or my... Um, my email is cueyourrealtor at gmail.com. Okay. That is awesome. Uh, anything? Oh, how's a chamber treating you? How, how's Doug treating you? I, that's <sighs> really what I, I want I feel like such a peasant sometimes when I walk in the door and See? how they treat me. Oh, it's, my God. I, I, I really try hard, but if they can just give me a little bit of attention, I would really love that. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's over the corner like, you're, ki you're killing me. You're killing me, Kira. You're killing me. Chamber's been awesome. All right? We're supposed to be like cohorts, and I just get treated just like a peasant. I know it's like the whips and chains. I know. Oh, so bad, <laughs> so bad. Anyway, <laughs> look at him over there in the corner. We love you, Dougie. <laughs> but the chamber's been good to you. I love Absolutely. the fact that they missed the beat with this whole COVID thing, and now we're coming out of it. We're coming back. They stronger. are the strongest yeah. out there. I am so proud, and yeah. I am the first to ever promote them to anyone when yeah. they talk about chamber. Upper Tampa Bay Chamber is the the way to go for sure. Awesome. Hey, look, so look, if you got these real estate needs and you're looking to transfer into a place where you're going to be the move, the final move, this is where you can help you right here. Sell your house, sell your content, set you up with a lawyer, whole nine yards, one shop stop. We will see everybody after these commercials. Hey, and we're back. Thanks for watching the other two swimmings. Now we're back with Sheila Neisler from, from the Upper Tampa Bay, Bay Education Foundation. Hey, it's a how mouthful. Are you? Absolutely, absolutely. But it's a mouthful that does a lot of good work. Absolutely, absolutely. These are our, some of our all stars. Basically, we started a program. Um, we serve 18 local elementary schools Whoa. and give them. Um, there's a lot of times the teachers, the average teacher spends $1,200 a year, year yes, yes. out of pocket for um, school supplies and, and um, rewards. And we created a star program. Um, student achievement, student teacher um, achievement and recognition program. Okay. And we go out to the schools and provide them with cash that they can pay for things wow. that maybe aren't in the budget. Right, right. And um, we've had a great year. Um, obviously, we're playing off the all-star program because right, uh, right. there's an all-star game coming up on July 14th. And so basically what we're trying to do is raise money for the kids. I mean, and it's, we're like t I'm telling people, if you want to invest in your future, invest right. in your kids. Well, absolutely. You know, take the Nintendos away and give them books. Give them books. Give them, give them toolkits. Give them artwork. Um, Hammer. Give, uh, nails. Art guns. supplies. Right. I'm a girl. Paint. Paint brushes. I know. I know several <laughs> women that are some monster con contractors. Absolutely. Well, they're they're, they're creative. They're, they're creative very creative. And... So what? So what does it take to be in this program? Basically, what we do is we ask for a six hundred dollar donation. Okay. And you can pay for it over a year, so it's like fifty dollars a month. And basically what we do is we align the school with the business. Okay. We, we do a lot of PR to highlight our businesses. Right. Um, AJ, who was our small business owner of the year last year, right. um, has been very involved in his, his child's own elementary school. And so we kind of like get them to you know, make a, a bridge 
between the business and organizations and the very schools that we serve. Okay. Um, 58% of the children in our community are on free and reduced lunches. Right. Which means probably they don't have as robust a PTA that can be raising money, right. selling wrapping paper, chocolates, or whatever. So what we try to do is business owners come in and kind of backfill and provide the financial support that these school teachers deserve right to, to do better I, I know I know a ton of I mean I really do I know a ton of teachers and they're always going well I have to go and buy this just for the kids I'm like well, why and I always go why are you buying it because mm -hmm. nobody else will the school can't do it the parents won't do it uh -huh. so and or they can't they do can't it. do it and then they get in there so but and but my kids I don't want my kids not having the right supplies exactly and, exactly. and I know there's some stores where they go to that they get stuff like that but they still wind up going to Walmart or Target and spending all this money on a, a lot of pins and paints and brushes and stuff like that and paper for their and kids. pencils and stuff right. like that and and you know education is a real uh, levels the playing field. It gives yeah. every kid a learning chance. Okay. Um, and I I love it because one of the things that happens is is our community is so special with so many manufacturers. Those are good paying jobs. Right. But to get those good paying jobs, you need basic skills. And so that's what you know we're providing the foundation for these children to succeed. Wow, that's amazing. So do I need to be a chamber member to be able to be in, to get involved? Not at all. We'd love for you to be a chamber member. There's lots of obviously marketing opportunities there's lots of exposure there's lots of connections yes um but we're open to anyone in the community that really cares about their kids i right. mean with 18 schools we've got a pretty big footprint we've got a double footprint on um what we're trying to do the other thing that we do is we provide um scholarships to um some seniors um, every year we provide $2,000 scholarships. Wow. Um, and a lot of times these are children um, of first generation college. And so, you know, their parents have provided for them, but giving them the extra boost mm -hmm. to go into technical school right. or to Harvard or to a local community college, it kind of smooths the way so they don't have to be concerned about Oh my gosh, can I pay for books? Right. So you you guys are not running out of any avenues whatsoever of trying of, of needing the fun, the funds, correct? I mean, it's not like you go, "Oh, we had a surplus this year because we didn't couldn't help anybody." You always always need money. Absolutely, absolutely. The the, the scholarships um, a wonderful man um, in Oldsmar a year, many many years ago challenged the chamber to raise uh, like a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. And he said, "I would match it." But that's in a like a trust fund. So that correct. money never runs out. Right. However, our all-star grants, every year we've got to raise the money to provide for the schools. And because the budgets have been cut because of COVID, what we're doing is step into the plate, yeah. literally, figuratively, um, to, to basically help those kids. That is absolutely. Now, do you, do you ever find yourself going, oh, there's this, you know, we have a classroom that we didn't get anybody for and you start calling going, hey, you got to help me out, blah, blah, blah. Or they need extra. Yes. I mean, like, because I know now, now not only do they need the school supplies, but they also need the the hand sanitizers and the cleaners and the wipes and all that kind of stuff too. Is that now if someone's got have, they had this stuff readily available? Can they drop that off and you drop it off? We at the can school? drop it off at the chamber. We can absolutely do that. I know but, money is good. Yeah. But if people have got the supplies, I know I've got way more supplies from COVID than I need now mm -hmm. because we, now that we're opening it up, I don't need it all. So I can donate that absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And we can always use something. We can, and, and if we can't use it at the schools, we can make sure that Oldsmar Cares or another local charity can can you basically use any and all donations. I mean, it's, it's amazing how I want to say thrifty. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the chamber is about making sure that we take care of each other. Right. I mean, I think that's important. The other thing is, and this is fun because we go from basic needs to accelerated needs. Okay. There, um, there was one school that was entering a robotics competition. Now, can you imagine being an elementary kid and learning to, to compete in robotics? The funding came from the all-star grants that is absolutely phenomenal so it's basic needs but also accelerated to kind of give the children a path um out of you know poverty to be honest with you right now what schools are you helping can you can you say like there's 18 of them <laughs> now, are they, no, so, so, okay let's do one Oldsmar elementary there you in Deer go. Park, right. mary bryant elementary and so are they Pen are they pinellas based upper they're campus? both they're both uh pinellas based and tampa based since the Oldsmar chamber um basically straddles straddles hillsborough exactly pinellas, right we basically looked at the footprint 
okay. you know, of the, the business members we serve and the community leaders we serve right. and said, where are the schools in that area? It's kind of like a holistic, I love it, the holistic chamber. It's not just about business. I right. mean, with, um, we had our annual meeting last week and we talked about how it, it's a family. Right. Well, and, and I think it's a family with children that need some support. Yeah, sometimes we, you know, and, I, and I'm not saying that we forget about our kids, but in the business world, we're, that's not where our mind is. Exactly. We're exactly. all hitting the adults. We're all hitting the thing. And then sometimes, you know, you do, you go, oh, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a massive need mm -hmm. in these families that don't have what, you know, some of us are blessed to have. Exactly. And they can't, they don't have the stuff that we need, so... Well, and you know me that I've been, I'm, I'm a real big believer in cause marketing. Yes. And that is with a, a for-profit and a not-for-profit come together for mutual profit. Correct. And so basically like Callisto, we're in, working with him to making sure that this is part of his marketing plan because people will decide where to shop, where to buy, right. you know, who to see based on what they do in the community. Yep. And that, so what we're trying true. to do is make it a little bit more robust. Okay. So now how do people get a hold of you? Basically, if you go to info at utbef.org. Okay. okay. And I think we'll CG that um, so that you basically they can see all the things that the children are doing. Right, right. Okay. That is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, what a... How long have you? How long has, has this been going on? Oh my gosh, for decades. It really, really? It, it's been going on for a Why long time. Why have I not heard? I mean, I, I think I've heard. I've, I've really not heard about it. Heard mm -hmm. about it, but I guess it's because I'm not in this community. Mm -hmm. We're up in Pasco side, so. Um, so if, if, if they can't get a hold of you, do they call the chamber? Absolutely, absolutely. They Joe talk to El Doug, right? The, yeah, they call Doug. Joe Elmer is the president of the Education Foundation. Should we put Doug's cell phone number Yeah, we there? can put Doug's cell phone number. <laughs> Let everybody call Doug. Hey, man, we got some stuff for you to come exactly, pick up. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But anyway, on um, because we're going to align with the baseball theme right. um, on the all-star game we're going to have um, a dine out for a difference a dine out for good so what is the all-star game you keep saying an all-star game like, national league baseball oh national oh that <laughs> all-star game hence the baseball cap oh i get it now See, <laughs> I did, I, i'm thinking there's a there's an all-star game right here somewhere that i don't know about oh exactly like, no it's 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 the the, the all-star all game, game. Oh, exactly okay. but on um all, the all-star game we decided to use it as a way to kind of play off the all-star game right. and the all-stars and uh we're working on getting four restaurants okay basically that are going to give us 10 percent of their sales wow. and we'll be listing that on um on our on the chamber website where okay. they can go and on facebook so if you're going to go out to dinner you know you can watch the all-star game but in the meantime when you eat um eat dinner 10 percent is going to help that charity Excellent. from the restaurant standpoint you can drive a lot of business on a slow night you betcha you know in the Absolutely. summer Absolutely. i mean it's, it's it's a great you know and so you can have a beer and help a kid make a home run in school oh i could have a whole bunch of beers and make a whole bunch of runs <laughs> in school you <laughs> probably could feel the whole team right right pretty much i'm right there with you so if look if you want to give to a great cause this is a great call reach out to sheila she'll take care of you reach out to doug or joe at the at the chamber of commerce it'll be really really good so hey look stick around go refresh to that coffee tea beer, wine, we don't judge here, and we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, welcome back to this special segment. Yes, we are not at Aston Gardens right now. We are actually in the studio at WeBeam TV because we had to bring Zach in. Zach Graham, he's with Office Pride. Now, so if, if I got a dirty place, can you guys handle it? Absolutely. We have franchise owners in the Tampa Bay area. They'll be glad to come out come out to you. Uh, but we're not. I'm not here to really talk about, you know, uh, being able to come out and clean your facility. Uh, and I know that's kind of when you see Office Pride Commercial Cleaning Services. You're yeah. Like, All right, I need to call them and uh, and set up a quote. 
Yes, you can do that, and I'll pass you on to the correct person, but I'm, a, I'm representing a different side of the business today, and that's on the, the franchising side. Okay. So Office Pride is a nationwide commercial cleaning franchise. We've got 140 franchises across the United States, and we're really looking to find those business builders here in the Tampa Bay area to, that wants to start a business and, and you know scale something here here locally. That's so now are so I, that means that I can get my own territory. I guess. Is, it, is it territory? It is. So we have we don't we have defined territories, but we don't have exclusive territories. There's just too much business out there to just say, hey, one person can run the entire city of Tampa. Right. Um, so we define your territory for you. We we sort of protect it for you. Um, no one can really advertise within your, your limits, but if they do have an account that expands to you, um, they'll be able to handle that. But we have, our culture really defines who Office Pride is. Uh, our franchise owners, they're like family. So if there's another local franchise owner within you know a, a, a specific area, they really communicate well with each other. And they, if an account does kind of go into their territory, they'll pick up the phone and say, Hey Jerry, I've got a I've got a, a, a commercial uh, proposal for you to do. Can you handle that? And, and it's really a a, a really well um, family that that we've built. So, what does it actually take to become a franchise owner? Yeah. So we have a seven step process that you work with me on. Uh, there is an overall investment. We're considered a low investment franchise, eighty five thousand dollars. Oh, that is. Not I'm saying that that's that's very inexpensive because I've I've looked into franchises in the past and man it's like you're talking millions absolutely and we've been around for 29 years so you have 29 years of resource that you get to tap into right on day one we have an operations team that you get to work with on a weekly basis we come out to you work with you side by side and with our corporate office here in Palm Harbor we're able to you know, spend that extra time with you, go out on proposal, those walkthroughs, those bids, help you work on your operations side. So we train you in all aspects of the business. Okay, So, but there's seven steps. Seven steps. It all starts with our first call. So if, uh, either you have decided that you want to start your own business or you know somebody that you can bring to me, we'll jump on a discovery call. We want to make sure there's a good fit before we take you through the other six steps. And during that that time we'll just say learn about your background what you're looking to do what your goals are what your vision is and then we'll move into obviously the application learn a little bit make sure you're financially qualified uh, every franchise has a franchise disclosure document so you have 14 days to look at that over uh, and then the fun part where you actually get to contact our franchise owners learn what the day-to-day -day looks like in your business uh, and you really ask those deeper questions because there's a lot of things that the FTC uh, franchise uh, trade commission. Like, the trade commission thank you just drew a blank there uh, they they limit us on some of the things that we share from a how much you can earn standpoint right but the franchise owners can talk about that all day uh, and then the last two steps are, are the background check and then discovery day where you get to come in uh, take a tour of our facility meet the team right there's a lot more behind the scenes than me uh, from from operations to marketing to billing uh, to technology, all these we have awesome team members in every category. Okay, so do I have to have a physical location? Mm -mm. No, you can actually initially start this right from your house, uh, and then as you grow and scale, our focus is on growth. Right, take those things off the off your shoulders to help you focus on growing your business, and then you can eventually move into a uh, small office, maybe a back warehouse type type facility. Because the, 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 you're really more, you're actually, you're truly mobile. Absolutely. Absolutely. All your employees are going to show up at the facility that they're going to clean, and then you just manage, manage the team that manages your frontline employees. Oh. It's all about scalability. With okay. Us. That, that makes a lot more sense. Um, so do, do, does the mothership uh, help get the business into your doors, or is the marketing on... As on the individuals. Yeah, that's a good question. A lot of that is, all that is really pushed onto the franchise owner. Now, we're going to teach you how to do it, right? right. We're going to teach you how to fish so you can handle it out there yeah. in, the, in the world. Um, lot there, when you look at commercial cleaning franchises, there are a lot of them that just go out, get the business for you. Um, you don't have any control over the profitability, right. the margins, the employees. 
where we're more of that executive model where you control that. You get to set the price of your, uh, of your proposal. You get to set the hourly wage for your employees and really manage those margins in your business. That is huge. Absolutely. Because typically, I mean, in typical, I know other franchises I've looked into, they're very strict. This is what you have to charge. This is your, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, day, the rates, the hours, yeah. of what you got to pay your employees. Uh, all, all of that yeah. is, is con really restricted by yeah. the, the, the owner or the, the corporate right. side. No, that really falls on the owners. I mean, we'll show them how, what, how to build a successful business and what margins that looks like. But at the end of the day, if they need to pay a little bit more for their employees to get good people in there and take a little more a hit on the margins, that that's their flexibility, and they're going to get more business that way. Right, right, right. And now, where is Office Pride corporately out of? Palm Harbor. It so is out of Palm it Harbor. Is right, we're located right there on East Lake and Tampa Road. Uh, we're that white building, second floor. We take up the whole entire second floor. I have, okay, yep. I know what you're talking about. Yep. Right. So feel free to stop by. I'd love to give you a tour if you want to see our training facility. Meet the team. Uh, Todd Hopkins, our founder, CEO, founded us, you know, on a college project at Butler University. I'll be. Uh, yeah, he just wrote it up, and then four short years later, he was franchising it. Wow. Yeah, and he's he's in the everyday business, so any day that you want to stop by, he's he's there to to meet and greet you. And so so office right now, do they help with the marketing side as well? I mean, the true mark, like here's your materials, mm -hmm. or here's what we what we would say. Hey, this is what you need to be handing yeah. out, and. Yeah, so that's a big piece of this. So Massive. we have a 1% advertising fund, but what you get a website with that. You get an Office Pride Jobs website with that. All of your collateral, your business cards, any any startup kits, your presentation folders, all of that's included. You don't pay anything extra for that. That's and in your that's in your franchise fee. That's in your 1% advertising. So your overall advertising fee and we're going to help drive people to your website through, you know, digital marketing and uh, pay per click and all right. those fun Google terms out there to yeah wherever, 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 where everyone's at yeah free uh, free marketing for Google there so yeah it's uh, we help them in all aspects of the business to help them really focus on that growth um, and really build a business I mean our largest franchise at the end of 2020 ended at five and a half million dollars in gross sales Whoa. yeah and our average franchise unit is five hundred fifty six thousand in gross sales average across one hundred forty units so. Uh, and all that information is located and disclosed in our FDD and item 19. You've got to make the Federal Trade Commission folks happy. Hit, the, yeah, hit, the, hit that number. That, that is a special number, too, by the way. They have to, they have to put that out there. Yeah. Um, so how did COVID yeah. How did COVID affect all the franchises? Growth. We growth. saw a lot of growth, I'll right? Be. So our franchise owners, and you know, from the, it all started from the top. Uh, top. Todd spent a lot of time sending out videos and staying in front of the, the owners. He loves that hands-on and just giving them updates on everything that came out of the CDC and EPA requirements and all that. Um, and it really helped our franchises lean on a system that they can trust and just continue to build their business, right? So we, we actually, one of my um, quotes was, we're more in the health and wellness business as we help to be the solution to stop the spread of COVID. Uh, and that's kind of how our franchise owners really went out there and said, hey, I've got a solution for you to help, you know, stop what this un unknown virus, right, that right. nobody has ever seen. And it really helped our franchise owners grow across the nation. That is phenomenal. So I, I ask us of all the, all the people that come on the show, so how's the chamber been treating you? Fantastic. I love the chamber. I'm a new member. Uh, as of this recording, I've been with them for three weeks, and it's oh been, wow, you are new. Yeah, it's been yeah, the baby. best decision I, I've made. The the connections I've already made, uh, and they they continue just to be you know very helpful and uh, and very knowledgeable as far as passing on the information to us and and very active chamber. Wow, very active hey, chamber. let me tell you, when COVID hit. They didn't miss a beat. That's awesome. They literally jumped right into it, got the, got the online side going until it's time to open up, which now we're opening up, yeah. and that's awesome. Yeah. Way to go, Florida. Way to go, DeSantis. You know, if, hey, if you like him, you like him. If you don't, I understand. It's a, uh, <laughs> look, if, and so if you're tired of what you're doing, give this man a call. Yeah. He could set you on a whole new path and set you up with a new business and a new lifestyle. Probably make more money than you're making now. Absolutely. Or, so, hey, look, thanks for watching. Uh, Go refreshing that coffee, tea, wine, beer. We don't judge here. So we'll be right back after these commercials. Stay tuned.
All right, we are back. And we again, we've been at the Aston Gardens over here, and we've got the man himself, Bradley <laughs> Perozo, right? And now, this is the Aston Gardens, and there's more properties now. Yes, sir. So it's probably since the last time that you guys actually did uh, uh, the Chamber TV Yes, we actually interview. did. This is the second time. Second I'm, time I'm here. I'm really happy. I know. It works out perfect that we have amazing space, and probably the first time you guys have been back since the renovations, yes. too. So that's uh, that's obviously an incredible uh, incredible thing to show off here. But like you were saying, uh, probably since the last time that you all came to interview us, we did uh, open and inquire a assisted living and memory care community discovery villages of West Chase. Nice. So a lot of times people don't know the uh, the connection between the two, but Aston Gardens is actually owned by Discovery Senior Living. Okay. Uh, so Discovery Senior Living is our lar is our is our corporate uh, company okay. that we own about 70, uh, 70 communities across the United States. So, now is it is it is it assisted or is it independent and assisted? So it's actually just assisted living okay, and, just assisted. and memory care services as okay. well. So we do offer the ability for our residents to age in place. Okay. So kind of the strategy and the reason why we uh, decided to go and uh, open a community that offered assisted living services is that we are, you know, we have over 300, uh, right now 400 residents Whoa. that are living independently, independently here at Aston Gardens. Right. So there's, we need to offer the ability are, are for our residents to age in place. Okay. Um, we know with, with, an, with a senior, you know, it's they. It's unfortunately they, we can't stay independent forever, and we right. do rely on uh, on caregivers to provide the the services to get through our day to day lives. Right. So uh, it, it allows our residents to truly, like I said, age in place and get service until end of life here with Discovery. Wow, that is amazing. So, it, so if if, if I hit that 65 and all of a sudden I have Alzheimer's or I have memory loss. I think that this is a good place for me. Exactly. Because the, the, minute, the minute that you My move My kids in, have no, <laughs> no, no. You'll be able to, well, we, we actually, right when you hit 55, so if you've gotten there yet, we can sign a contract this today. Year, <laughs> I've just turned 55. That's perfect. Awesome. You're, my, okay. you're my perfect client. <laughs> They get pretty nurses? They do. Sweet. Yep. <laughs> no, I'd be a little upset about that. But um, So now... What made you get, what, what drew you into this industry? So it was kind of just a, a door that opened for me, to be quite honest. Uh, I had graduated in 2014 from Florida State. Okay. I got my degree in exercise science. So I got my bachelor's and hopeful and, and being hopeful to go into med school. I uh, was starting to study to either become a physical therapist or looking at PA, DO, looking at different avenues. And as I was shadowing a physical therapist, that's where I got introduced into senior living. Okay. Uh, I uh, I was very similar to what a lot of people out in the streets think what senior living is, is just nursing homes yeah, and 55 and older, right? right? I had no idea that there was actually these beautiful luxury communities that not only offer the care, but they offer the lifestyle as well. And so... Uh, I was recruited to work into an entry level sales position where I where I, I thought oh this is great I can get experience right. but make money doing that right? right so instead of doing the unpaid internships I got the opportunity to work into an entry level sales uh, position which then got me to my first company uh, Brookdale Senior Living where I was there for four years and it was. What really drove me to want to, and I tell everybody this story, what drove me to want to stay in this industry is as I was working the entry level the position, I was going and actually working with the resident themselves. I remember uh, it was at a community over in Pinellas County. I went to go visit uh, one of our one of our clients, and I knocked on the door. She opened you know, opened to our to allow me inside to do a uh, we were doing lab guided med mm -hmm. management. So I was going to be doing some lab work with her, and uh, I you know did my spiel, introduced myself. I'm Bradley. Very nice to meet you. I'm here to do this, and all she said to me was, "I'm lonely." That's the only thing she said to me, oh. uh, and so. That you know that struck me because this is I, now as I sat down and spoke with her and spent a, a couple extra minutes with her 10, 15, just learning about her life. Right. She was an immigrant from Ireland. She had no family that lived in America. Mm. Uh, you know she was now the last the last living individual of her family. Oh, wow. And so she really had nobody that she could rely on or lean on except for that community. Wow. So I thought, what can I do to make a difference in people's lives? Uh, is to be an expert to help their loved ones place them into a great community that's not only going to provide the care but provide the social life and really what we're what we want to do is give quality of life back right. to our, our aging population 
they took care of us. We got to take care of them. <laughs> exactly. Right? This so, is great. I mean, that's what they say. This is the greatest generation, right? It, so, and I and I honestly, I believe that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've gotten to work with incredible war heroes, uh, people that have held very, uh, very, very high, you know, uh, jobs in this uh, in, in any industry. Uh, it's it's just unbelievable the stories that you get to hear. Right now, you are the director of sales. Yes, sir. So you're the person that we're going to see if you know if I come and go. Okay, it's time. So to, uh, you're my first. <laughs> you're my first face to visit. I'm one of them. We have I mean, I I actually kind of oversee uh, this entire sales team. Okay. So I wouldn't be your first face that you would be meeting. Uh, typically, you'd be working with some of our senior lifestyle counselors. Okay. So we have uh, three here at the community at Aston Gardens: Robin, Lori, and Dexter. Those would be your three individuals that you would. Not uh, sure if I trust any guy named Dexter. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's a reason. I promise you, he's not like Dexter oh, on okay. the show. All he's right, he's right. one of the sweetest. Nice Nicest man, uh, guys, you can ever you can ever That's work with. Cool. And then over at Discovery Villages of West Chase, we have Dominique. So okay. they're going to actually be your first face. They're oh, gonna, okay. uh, I I more or less do the uh, do boots on the ground business development mm -hmm. for the for the company. Uh, I am working on the relationship building between the hospitals, the rehabs, and just the community service. Okay. So um, you know, giving back with the Chamber of Commerce or or working with the local Rotary. Um, that's more of my my okay. style. So speaking of the Chamber of Commerce. What? I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> that's, but, that's awesome. Yeah, I, it's it's absolutely incredible. Um, I, I I when we accepted this award on Friday, I even said in my speech, "says I've been with this community only for two months now. Oh, okay, I have nothing to do with this." <laughs> but it's like, this good is, for you. Yeah, right. I'm like, I get the, I get all the you know, it's I get the I get all the awards, and I had hats on the back. Good exactly, job, right? Good job. I had nothing to do with it. Right. But it really, it's it's this is a testament to the team. Uh, it's a testament to our leader, our executive director, Linda Roberts. Right. Uh, you know, she's been with this community now and been with the company for nine years but with this community for almost three and she is the reason why we're winning this award is because she has led uh this this community and led the the team members to keep our residents safe and which was this last year and a half you know this was the the epicenter right the senior communities right. where covid Absolutely. was a major impact right uh and so and all, you see, heard in the news every day and what was happening in senior communities locking down right so uh, i we owe it we owe it i owe it to accept this award, I owe it to the team that was in place here prior to me coming. That's uh, it's it's absolutely you know an honor and to be you know to be recognized because you know it, this what Aston Gardens had to go through between shutting down the community for COVID right. while also going through a renovation. Our residents probably wanted to get the heck out of here. So <laughs> the only reason why they stayed was because of the leadership and the right. team, you know, and what they've had to go through. The, uh, but I can tell you now, they're extremely happy with us being able to reopen the community, being vaccinated, right. uh, and and having the renovations. Our residents are are back to saying this is the place to be. So if I want to stay at an award-winning facilities, how do I go about starting? So the first thing I would recommend doing is just pick up the phone and give us a call. Okay. Uh, typically, when you go call to the community, you'll be connected to. To one of our counselors, one of our, uh, whether it be Rob and Lori or Dexter, like I said, uh, those would be the individuals who would then be able to lead you through that process. Okay. Um, the talk, you know, they'll ask a couple questions. It's kind of learning a little bit about your life because. Mm -hmm. uh, our communities are not one, one size fits all. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that when you're choosing the best senior community for your loved one or for yourself, that it really is, uh, it's going to be the place where you want to stay forever. Okay. Because we don't, we want to, we want this to be in, in a sense, uh, our residents last move. Um, and I, I don't mean to be say it like a, as no, a, no. You know, morbid, but right now. it's, yeah. uh, it's moving is very stressful. And yes. so when you look at a community, you want to be able to age in place. Right. Uh, so working with our counselors, we get to know you guys on a personal level uh get a chance to to learn about your life and your story because like i said when you've seen what when you've seen one resident we we try to make those connections and create those friendships right off the bat because this is a personal touch right. we're not selling you we're not selling you a product we're selling you a lifestyle right right and so we we want to make sure that we're providing uh, the best service possible for those for those That's individuals mm -hmm. so and so you can go to the website yes sir check everything out if all the, so if you're looking and again no no to my kids <laughs> go to the website check it out see all the amenities and all the facilities they have and see what they do for you and then you go and then you make a phone call and you come in and you see robin dexter and lori lori 
and, and, and will... I'm still here too. So and I mean, you I can, you can see Bradley. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, you can still. I, I saw Bradley on TV. I want to meet Bradley. Exactly. That's, that's... If you like the smiling face, you got to come meet there me. There you right? go. Right. <laughs> that's it. And, and I tell you, everybody, I, we got here this morning to set up, and everybody was super awesome. I mean, Wonderful. The staff was really great. Thank you. Um, even the residents are like, "Oh, you guys are back." <laughs> a couple new from last time and, and we, it, it, it's great you know you got to stay in no because you're here you got to stay and host an activity that's that, that that's going to be your payback trades you, yeah you got to do something for the residents uh that that's going to be your that's oh, going to be your goal now man. Since, you're, since you're taking up since you're they, taking up their space you got to host an event I, yeah, this is arson craft room where we're at. <laughs> yeah we're, so, gonna, it's, we're gonna get paint thrown on us for uh, we are I'm, we've already <laughs> been in here you gotta get out by a certain time say thanks for watching my chamber tv we appreciate it you know this is a great facility give them a call if you actually need this this type of services yes sir we'll see everybody next week on my chamber tv Thank you.